Welcome back. <laughs> Welcome back to Prime Morning. Uh, it's time for women in business. Uh, every time that we bring you women in business is because we are super concerned about you, our lovely viewers. And we want you, for those of you that are highly interested in being entrepreneurs or who are already entrepreneurs, but then want the guidance, uh, the proper guidance and guidelines as to how best to flourish in the world of business or being your own bosses, we bring a woman who are doing exceptionally well doing their own thing in the world of business. And that's what we do every single Monday. And today is no exception. I have seated with me this morning an exceptional woman. She is a chartered accountant and she has over 20 years of experience in financing, in auditing and accounting. Not just that, she has some other businesses to her name that she is going to share with us and hopefully she will give us some guidelines as to how best we can proper manage our finances. Me, I fall victim to some extent when it comes to my finances. I am talking about Rama Boache Wasim. Yes. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. Thank you. Many, many happy so, you know, when I, saw, when I saw your profile, right, I was like, okay, so before the actual conversation starts, I want to ask you something. <laughs> There's this conversation of any time that is Salah, you guys give we, us meat. In fact, <laughs> yes. we are the ones that are always chasing you. For the meat. For the, 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 the big meat. one. The, the big one. Aha, uh -huh, mm. the big one. So this festive season, uh, Christmas, mm -hmm. did anybody bring you any? Mm -mm. Oh, mm -mm. I even put on my status that I'm ready for party. Oh. People should invite me to come and <laughs> small chicken. We are not even asking for much. Hey, hey, One chicken hey, thigh like this. Shy. Eh. Not Sorry. even inviting you to. This year is even going to run fast because Ramadan will be somewhere March. So after oh. March, kota kota. May June so, will be will be so big age. Regardless, will you give us some of them? Oh, from you know, as <laughs> as in Sadaka, <laughs> we, we are cool like that. <laughs> Thank you in advance, Robert. How was the festive season for you? Um, what did you do exactly? Okay, in di on different phases. Okay, mm. for for me as a personally, mm. it's you know holidays are. As a family woman, it's relaxing. You get to have time to be with your kids, and there's something that I've been trying to do for some time now where yeah. I invite all my uh, nieces and nephews to, so that we just come and have mm -hmm. one day a sleepover and then the following we have breakfast so it was good okay uh, for business mm -hmm. it was a bit slow mm. um, for us that I'm into kids where mother care yeah so and you know where the, where the Christmas is in January there's no much space so yeah. Parents are a bit more careful now. Mm -hmm. You have people walking in and going like, oh, the dress is nice, but I think I'll let her wear what she wore the last time. But I'm interested in uh, things that she will use for school. Mm -hmm. So that's where you need to take a quick decision. So move into school shoes, school bags, okay. and stuff like that so that you can make some sales out of, the, out of that place. Okay. So it was relaxing mm -hmm. and, you know, you have to learn and be quick right. to take decisions. Rama, tell us about your upbringing. Well, I, I, I grew up in a conservative but more relaxed home. Okay. My parents, uh, both educationalists, uh, they are retired teachers. Um, so we were quite exposed very early. We grew up in a home that was filled with books, mm. all manner of books, <laughs> religious, entertaining. And I remember my dad used to subscribe to this uh, magazine called the Reader's Digest. So he would force oh, me to read okay. it. Reader's very, very, very Digest. old. Mm -hmm. And when media started changing, um, he will force you to sit down and listen to BBC, mm -hmm. watch CNN, and mm -hmm. force you to analyze it at the end of the day, what you heard, what, what do you think. Okay. You know. I was born in Nigeria. Okay. Um, I'm the sixth of the eight children. Okay. Yes, we are the last Latter-day Saints. Yeah. And we have very <laughs> bigger ones ahead of us. So mm -hmm. growing up has been very... Well, like I said, conservative, so mm. we're a bit strict. But my dad allows you to have room to think. So would, would, you, would you say that looking at how your father was keen on you listening, watching BBC, mm. CNN and all that, you grow a liking for media? Yes. You did? Yes. Even be way before that, I is lights, actually. Okay. Lights. I had this, I don't know to call it a vision or a trance, but... 
I, I can't remember when I was about three or four years, I saw myself on stage with lights addressing wow. people. How old were you? About three or four. That was way back in Nigeria. Wow. So I spoke to uh, one of my me 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 mentor. He was one of my f first bosses, Mr. Prosper Samuel. He said, keep that vision. Mm -hmm. If I need proper person, someone has been someone that I cherish so much. Mm. I love to read because I was introduced to reading yeah. very, very early. Yeah. So he was telling me, ah, what are you reading? It was romantic novels. You know, <laughs> girls. <laughs> you can't get it in real life. Read, read about it. Yeah. So he said, no, you're wasting your time. Mm -hmm. You did accounting in SHS. You did it in HND. You have to do your professional exams. Then I just brush it off. One day I got to the office and like, did you go to register? I said, no, sir. Back into the car. <laughs> so my professional certificate, he was the quarter of it. Oh, incredible. He forced me to go register for the classes and register for the examination. Mm. And I, I became a qualified accountant. So I would say that you started off by doing a nine to five job. Yes. before you ventured into it. Still do. You still do? Yes. And you still run your business? Alongside. Oh, my goodness. You have to find a way of managing it. Plus five kids. Plus five kids? In schooling. Okay. Okay. Let's relax in here. Let's, <laughs> one after the other. Let's digest it one after the other because, like, I'm actually intrigued by this already. Mm -hmm. You are still doing a nine to five. I so I've, I've, in I've interviewed quite a number of women who have been here and... Um, they leave the nine-to-five job completely just yes. so they can focus, focus fully on being an entrepreneur because yes. usually balancing the time, Commit resources, energy and everything is exactly. quite difficult. Exactly. But you are still doing a nine-to-five. Yes. Yes. Now let's come to at what point did you think there was a need for you to start your own business? Okay, so for me clothing came naturally. I'm a twin. Okay. Okay, okay. so... Any time you, we dress and we go out, we go like, oh, it suits you. I want one. Can I have one? So I used to go to town and just buy it and come and give it to you. Then after a while, I was spending my money on transportation, phone calls. Then we didn't even have um, camera phones to send mm. pictures for the person. Mm. To. So you, you might have to do about two or three trips just okay. for the person to be able to buy the, the, the dress. Mm. So I was like, no, let me charge something. Let me put something on it, so at least to cover my operational expenses. Yeah, the up so and down. That's how it started. Mm -hmm. Then we traveled to get, and get goods. Started at, with a shop at uh, Mataheku. Moved to Usu. Ran it for a while. Now I'm at Tuba Junction on kids' clothing. I left the um, ladies' wear. Ladies' wear. <laughs> so now you are doing kids', kids clothing. clothing. Yes. Okay, so when you started doing the up and down, trying to get clothes and then to sell and all that, you were doing the nine to five. So what time so, were you closing? Were you doing this only on weekends? Yes, you and mostly weekends? after work. So you get someone to be at a shop for you. Okay. So it, it takes a lot of commitment mm. to do it. Mm. Myself, I don't see myself doing it as I would have loved. Okay. Because you need to be in there. One thing about starting a business in, in this our part of the world is that you see, the vision sits with you. Mm -hmm. The person you engage hardly see where you want to go. Right. So you have to be by the person to break it down on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Attitude, behavior, how you welcome customers. Mm -hmm. you, you have to be there to show it and then the person also replicate. You not be in your business, that's the fastest way to kill it. I need to, can you run us to the number of businesses that you do? Okay, so I have the kids wear. Yes. And I have Rami Consult on the side. So... Rami Consult Start was born out of when I left job. I've, I've left You've job left. before. Yes. Okay. Okay. I was with a telecommunications company. Mm. So after a while, I, I had to leave. Because then I had two, you know, younger ones. And it was a bit difficult mm. to you know, run the home. And we had moved to a new area. Okay, so you did get to that point. Exactly. <laughs> I did. So I, I left work to focus on the business. But unfortunately, it met you know, serious economic challenges then. Okay. Uh, 2012 was a bit difficult mm. uh, for where I chose. I went into um, dressmaking. Okay. So I, had, I opened up a shop in Osu. And um, after a while, I said, you know what? I'm not a seamstress. You I'm hadn't started busy. the kids' clothing yet? No. Okay. It was just a bit. I was, I was running my boutique all right, all right. Okay. But I just wanted to add the sewing in addition right. to the boutique. You have to diversify. 
I, move them I, fans. I think you like money. Yes. You move like money. I, I love money, and I think love, money loves me. I want money to fall in love with me. I want my relationship with money to get to a point that when money is struggling and is, is depressed, wow. money should come and look for me. Say, Rami, wow. I'm too, I'm I'm too tired yeah. with all this money. You right. take it and manage it for oh, me. Wow. That's the kind of relationship I want to find. I can tell. I can tell. So just diversify it. So mm -hmm. um, after a while, I said, you know what? Since I'm not a designer, and these people are frustrating me, and I cannot be doing that with the yeah, boutique. Yeah. Why don't I go to Benya Media, which is, I'm an accountant by profession. Then I had done my master's in oil and gas. And I do have calls from friends. Oh, Rami, can you help me do this? I want to register a business. Rami, what do you think about this? I saw this advert. I have this, you know, SS funds. I want to uh, invest it. What do I do? So it started with, you know, friends and family just advising them. I said, okay, let me just register it and formalize it. So even though I will not charge you, I'll still open a folder for you with your business name and all the engagements that we had are filed since I began. Then, then, it, then it means that people were seeing that with what you were doing or with, with what you had started, you were doing well. Yes. And that's the reason they, they, they would call oh, you and seek exactly. advice and it led you into opening the consulting exactly. firm. That's exactly. And my love for media also pushed me to open the production and media. Yeah, I know you're a, you're a TV host. <laughs> uh, a Muslim woman's yes, TV cover show, up. Cover Up. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so aside uh, the uh, Ramat Consultancy, which, mm. which other one? So there's Rami Consult, Rami, there's Rami's Kids. Rami's Kids, yes. Or Rami's Home. Then also um, Cover Up. Cover Up. Okay. So... You know, you, you, you move in phases. The, when the boutique started, you're single. You have all the time. But as and when the kids came in, yes. you started family, you're yeah. now married. Yeah. And you're also growing in your office. You're getting more responsibility. Mm -hmm. It becomes challenging. So at a point in that, I needed to make a decision. Mm. So I chose entrepreneurship and family for four years. After a while, I went back. What made you go back? Like I said, it faced a lot of challenges. It was difficult for me to run and sustain the cost of running it. I ended up pushing almost everything that I had in and it wasn't coming in. Mm -hmm. So yes, I needed to go back. We quickly ran back to the five to eight, mm -hmm. make some money because I, that one, at least you know there's a guarantee that at the end of the month- At the end of the month, you're getting your you're salary. Getting something. So yeah. if, if, you, if I'm able to manage it well, I'll be able to go back. So when I was going back then, I focused now on kids' clothing in the media. What were some of the mistakes you would say you made in relation to the businesses that you started? On hindsight, hmm, I don't want to call them mistakes. They are lessons. Okay. The experiences, that's what makes Rami, Rami consult, you know. You, when you're speaking, you, 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 you're not, in, it's not in abstract. You know what you're talking about. Right. Well, one, one I was, what I'll say is that before you take a decision to use money, think through what, what exactly you want to do. Okay. And be certain where you want to put the money in. Okay. Okay. So if you want to go into service, are you aware of your clients? What exactly do you need? Don't open a, a business because you think and feel people will buy. Mm -hmm. People will come and make their mm -hmm. hair. Mm -hmm. People should come. Something should bring them to you. So I believe in make, doing a lot of leg, leg work before you even open the, the shop mm. or open you the do business. Do a lot of leg work. Yes. So that immediately you put it out there, it doesn't, it doesn't keep, stay on the shelf for like two for, weeks. For long, yeah, because people are familiar with it. Your customers are already there. Yes. People are already, you know, they are, they've queued to come and, you know, right. patron, patronize your right. business. Right. That amount of time and dedication, mm -hmm. we need to have it. Mm -hmm. And don't put in too much of money. And you're starting. Yes. Because you're now starting. You don't know how it will go. So put in what is necessary. For instance, you have, let's say, maybe 5,000. Mm -hmm. You put a whole 3,000 into rent. You're left with 2,000. Out of these 2,000, you're not going to put in furniture, probably have yeah. to fix something in, yeah. the, in the shop, yeah. do A, B, C, D. You don't need to start with the shop. Start from your home, wherever you find yourself, in your car. I had a friend who sold from you know, we used to walk and sell, then we didn't have a car until we purchased the car from his boot. Now he has two shops. Hmm. 
most of his clients were even from um, Joy FM at back, back in the days. Okay. Yes, the guys used to really petroleum his things a lot, mm -hmm. you see. As the business is growing, now you can put in the money. Mm -hmm. Because you know when you put it in, at first maybe if you started with two clients, now you have five, you have ten. So you know when you bring it in, at least for the, if you bring 20, 50% is already off the shelf. But somebody would also say that, okay, I've managed to get quite an, a, a, an amount of money that I believe mm. if I'm to put it in this, it could keep me running. Like I said, put in the essentials. Okay. There are, it depends on the, there are some businesses, for instance, if you want to open a restaurant, you can't tell me you won't rent. Yes. You can't tell me you won't furnish it. Mm -hmm. You won't give it a necessary ambience that mm. the restaurant will need. Mm. Okay. But look at the business. As I said, you need to understand the business that you want to go in yeah. and what it requires. Some business, for me, I think it needs customers first, if you ask me. You know, we have location, like, uh, capital, customers, and all that. You can vary it, what the business needs, and be able to look at the, the, how you can mix the variables mm -hmm. in order to achieve the output that you want to. That's what I would advise, and I think that's the, I won't call it the mistake, mm. what I needed to have taken time to look at. For instance, with the, the sewing business, mm -hmm. was, it's a very good business, Yeah, you know, but I should have taken my, maybe I should have just gotten a course, a six-month course in dressmaking and started it. Before. So at that time, you, you, you didn't really know how to sew? No, I still don't know how to sew. You still don't know how to sew? I can stitch. So, so how were you doing it? That time? You see, that is it. <laughs> we, we always expect that when you open a business, you should be able to do it yes. yourself. No. Mm. I believe some people have the business ideas. Mm -hmm. Some have the capital. You know, we have venture capitals and angel, angel investors. They have the money at their disposal. Someone should be able to have the idea. Others should be able to help the idea to come into fusion. Right. We need to be able to break the chain of entrepreneurship. It should be one person, you find the capital, open the business, run it. Mm. That's tiring. We need to appreciate how to break the whole chain down and find people who specialize. Some people just do business ideas and sell it. Proposals. That's all the person does. Someone should also be able to, you know, mobilize funds. And other people should be able to also run businesses. But here, we're expected to do all Everything. of the things. I think, I think that one problem that we face is you, you trying to invite somebody into your business. And then before you realize... Partnership. Partnership. Mm. It becomes an issue when it comes to sharing whatever profits. It, I think that is the issue. No, it shouldn't be an issue. Why it shouldn't be an issue? You see... We, we, we tend to take a lot of things for granted, okay? So for instance, um, when you look at major businesses, multinationals, they started off as family businesses. Mm. Coca-Cola bottling company, KFC, yeah. Johnson & Johnson and whatnot. They're all family businesses. As you're growing, definitely, you need people. You can't do it all. No. So what do you do, right? Scribble down. How you want the partnership to go, who is taking what, who is doing what. Mm -hmm. That agreement, that understanding shouldn't be by word of mouth. It should be documented. And we all stick by it. And you should know the kind of partners that you are bringing on board. True. People who buy into your vision, people who buy into your ideas, people that you are in sync with. Before, before you even end your, your sentence, the person is already, you know, onto the nest for you. Those are the people you should bring because... At the end of the day, it's not just money. It's not about goods. Yeah. It's about ideas and being able to bring it into fusion. There are a lot of people who are pregnant with ideas. Yeah. Beautiful one. Yeah. But what to bring it out and become a, boot, a, a, a service, a product, a business, that is the problem. Mm. So I believe in partnership. I believe in getting all the help that you want. Mm -hmm. But let's be clear. Even me and my twin... Mm -hmm. Everything that we do, we, we, we agree. <laughs> yes, I don't say that oh, because she's my twin. No. Rahi, I need money. Okay. How much do you need? I need 20K. Okay. How are you going to pay me? Okay. Yes. Okay. And as, as a religious, in fact, Islam demands it. Okay. That when you're going for money, you have to discuss everything and know when to pay. Mm -hmm. And you stick by it. If you're having difficulties, quickly run back to the first thing that you saw the mass fans for that I'm having challenges. Can we push it? 
That's it. So partnership is good. You need all the help that you can, but know who you are dealing with and what you, how you're going to manage the partnership. If you don't go on a certain level, I don't advise that you do so. For somebody who, uh, yeah, I mean, with your expertise in financing, accounting, mm -hmm. and auditing, and all that, uh, I want us to try and help uh, some viewers out there who want to go into business, mm. but um, don't know how best to gather the funds and do things right, right from mm. the beginning. Mm. So, as somebody who is new at this, but you have a great business idea and you have some funds mm. into wanting to start it, what exactly would you have to do from the beginning? And how do you go about things? Okay. What else, if you come to ask you why? Why? Yes. Why well, that business? Exactly. Because okay. some, some, some want to create jobs for themselves. Yes. Yes. Others want to solve societal problems. Okay. Um, others want to just, you know, have SS funds and they want to um, get something in return. Mm -hmm. So if it's just about getting something in return, you can invest it. If you want to create a job, I have an issue with that. Oh. Those, they, they are the people who tend to rent a very nice place and put big chairs in it so that you go and sit there. <laughs> After a while. <laughs> but if you're there to solve a problem, you wake up to come and solve the problem okay. every day. Okay. You wake up because the need is there. Mm. So what's the purpose for for opening the business, right. you know, I'm quitting my job to go and open a business. It's good, it's all well and good, but why? What am I doing? Yeah. When we resolve that, mm -hmm. then we now look at what do I have? What are they, you know, you, you have a num you need a number of things, but what do I have immediately that I can start with? What do I have immediately? How much do I have? Sometimes it might not necessarily even be the money. Maybe you, you have someone that you can just go and get goose on credit. Mm. Yes. Okay. Or someone that you know you can just go and pick one or two. I know someone who started one counting machine and has a business. Mm. Carried it on top of his head and just went to Melcom, buy one counting machine, go and sell it, go back, pick it. Ghanaians have a problem with hearing some success stories about business owners mm. that, mm. oh, this is the amount that I started with. Most That's of the time, I haven't mentioned any amount. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to avoid that. I started with 200 Ghana cities <laughs> selling oh, so Gary and pure water. <laughs> Ghanaians have a tough time <laughs> accepting that how could you possibly have started a business with, let's say, 500 Ghana cities? It's possible. It's possible. It's possible. I guess, you know, it... They should ask, how long has the person been in business? Okay. This, this machine business that I just shared, the person has been in business for over 20 years, or close to 20 years. Let me just be conservative, you know. So if the person said, I started with 500. Maybe the value of the money Calculate at that 500 time. back in the yeah. day. Yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah. And as the person is growing, mm -hmm. definitely wouldn't sit at 500. Right. It's going to grow. Right. People are going to invest in it. Partnership is going to develop. Mm -hmm. Or the clientele is going to increase. Mm -hmm. So it's not the 500 per se that you're seeing. Mm -hmm. It has grown. Mm -hmm. Of course, value has been added. Mm -hmm. But that is how the person started. And it's the truth. What else do you want me to say? Mm -hmm. I started with one dress. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and no, one no. dress? Yeah. I mean, like you literally and, did. Oh, you, you Rami, did. your veil is nice. <laughs> Can I have one? Then I bring it to you. I wasn't even charging. That's how I it just started. bring it. I bought it for this man. Give me the money. Go and, let me go and buy it for you. That's how it started. And Rami comes oh, can you help me go and register? I'll go and register. But for who will pay? Yeah, who will pay? Who will yeah. pay for the fool? Yeah. Who will pay yeah. for the phone calls? Yeah. Okay, so put a premium on it. They are charging this. Uh, this is my... That is it. Mm. So if someone says I started with 200, mm -hmm. it could be true. Could it could be. Mm. So let's not you know, put everything together yeah. like that. Some, some are a bit um, is it superfluous or a bit difficult to swallow, especially when I look at the period that they started and where they've got into, okay. or they are forcing us to believe that within the short period, mm -hmm. they've been able to do that. Mm. Okay, so it's a bit, unless, I don't know, if, unless they have told me that, okay, uh, in the third year of the business, we had this huge contract from the government, mm -hmm. or we had this huge mm -hmm. contract from this client, okay. or blah, 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 blah. Then it makes sense. Okay. But you can't start from 500. Mm -hmm. Then within three, four years, you are, you are at this 
point you have, you, you should be able to it's tell me how you, you, you grew. Okay. You started with two clients, mm -hmm. you grew to 10, and now you're handling about 300 or so. Mm -hmm. So I will understand the 500 Ghana cities, but if you can't break those things down, it's, it's a bit difficult. It's a bit difficult to swallow. Exactly. Right. Now, um, Rama, it's a brand new year, mm -hmm. and I know that quite a number of you viewers at home have some very interesting resolutions, <laughs> but especially when it comes to finances. I stopped that thing. <laughs> <laughs> I still do a bit. A uh, little bit, yes, yeah, yes, yes. Yeah. But I vary it. Okay. Mm, mm, okay. Mm. Uh, you know, you start, you should be able to go back and be varying it. Yeah, okay. yeah. So, for instance, in 2019, if you started something, COVID could have quick, quickly changed that fast for you. And afterwards, we had a series of issues. We had the Russia-Ukraine war. We had this, yeah. we had that. So yeah. you should be able to go back mm -hmm. and look at your resolution. Okay. And um, you have to have a healthy relationship with money. How? Yes. You have to respect money. OK. Yes. I, as I told you, I want money to really see mm. me. You know, and fall in love with me and right. come to me. So, you will call me stingy, or you call me uh, Pepe. But what I will say is that I have a very, you know, good relationship with, with my money. Miami. So that when I'm parting with it, I need to take permission. <laughs> okay. And that is the budget. Yes. You need to have some financial discipline in you. Mm -hmm. It's all, you know, lifestyle. Because yes. All, all of us are looking for money. Yes. We are all looking for yes. money. But it's a few that gets money. True. Very true. So what you are able to get is not just about looking for it, but how do you keep it? How do you sustain it? What's your expenditure? Okay. What do you spend on? Are they things that brings you return or they just take it away? There should be things that you know as they are going out, either they are coming back with other babies following them, we could call them interest or profit, mm -hmm. or they should come back the same way that they went. You, ha you need to have that relationship with money. Else, you can find money, but money will leave you. Mm. That is what I mean by healthy relationships. So yes, understand your sources of revenue. Where is the money trickling from? Mm -hmm. Who are my clientele? Who, are, who, who depend on my business for survival? Understand them, love them. Their needs should be. That's how come you now customer service can start coming in, pleasing the customer. The customer is the queen. The customer is the king. Yes, that's appreciating where your revenue source is coming from. Okay. When it finally comes, how do I spend it? I think you should spend more on where the money is coming from. So anything that is about the business that will bring in returns, spend. Spend. Okay. But because you know you've gotten 500 Ghana, so there's a new shoe that you've been eyeing on IG. Mm. You want to go and get it. Mm. And that's how fast money will leave you. Mm. So what's your expenditure? Have this healthy appetite for being, quote unquote, stingy at a certain time in your business. Your business will get to a certain level that it becomes effortless in generating money for you. Because then you know that when I bring in this, I have this number of people that I'm going to distribute it to. I have this number of clients that every month I'm expecting this number, this amount of check right. from. So if I'm able to spend 30%, 50%, 80% on A, B, C, D, I can work within the 20% and it's a guarantee. When your business gets to that level, then you can go to IG and be looking at all the pictures and be ordering. But so then, have that respect. Have that respect. Stay within your budget. Mm -hmm. Stay within your plan. And be able to vary as and when things are changing in the economy. And pay keen attention to when the budgets are being read. Mm. And depending on the industry that you find yourself, you know, sometimes funding comes into the country. But you need to belong to maybe a particular association if you are in the dressmaking association, yeah. whatever association, exporters association, yeah. or be in surgery and pay dues. So that when some, because when World Bank is coming in to give Ghana money for, to support business, they don't look for individuals. Yes. They look for organizations. Yes. They look for associations. 
So if it's only when you are in such association that you can benefit from such grants. Grants are there. In fact, I, I am certain, I'm aware that there are grants for businesses and individuals, uh, entrepreneurs have had access to it and it's really helping them. During the COVID, grants were given. Mm -hmm. um, people who had um, challenges when their um, shops got bent, yeah. received some yeah. grants, yes. Yeah. So, but if you are not within, so you could be in that market, people will receive and you will not and get, you then you get, start blaming yeah, all sorts. Exactly, all because that. I don't belong to A, B, uh -huh, I don't belong to, uh -huh. I'm not getting it. But you're just not putting your, positioning yourself exactly. in the right places. So keep your ears down. Right and know where to go. So that mm. when some of these things, you know, this levers that brings in ease come in, you can tap into it. But have that healthy relationship with, with money. money. Look for money. When you find it, respect it and keep it within your budget. But somebody who, is, who only relies on monthly salary, that's only one job. Mm. And let's say um, it's paid about 2,000 Ghana CDs every single month. Mm. With, with children or single person? Let's say, let's start with single person. Single person. In Accra. In Accra. The person pays rent, was living with the father. <laughs> I need to understand the dynamics. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. So, so, let's come to, okay, let's state it this way. Definitely. So, people who have moved from um, uh, rural areas and have come into a mm. crop mm. and have gotten jobs but are being paid the minimum like a thousand five hundred to two thousand Ghana cities per mm. month are paying rent mm. every year mm. uh, have to take care of year. themselves two years in advance two years even two years in advance mm. and all that mm. how can you say that you're going to try and manage your two thousand or thousand five hundred Ghana cities uh, um, salary mm. and also be able to save out of that money as well. Hmm. You need to try. You need to try. Let me share your story. You okay. know, I, I mentioned that we're eight. Yes. Yes. At a point in time, about five of us were either going to tertiary to continue to SHS. My parents are teachers. How much is their salary? Mm back in the days. So they called us, sat us down, and said, we're going to take decisions that we know some of you might not like, but at the end of the day, you'll be, you'll be grateful. It will help, yes. okay. By your results, all of you should have gone to the university. But if you go to university, you might not be able to afford it. So the three of you, myself included, you're going to do H&D. The, the three last? Three, th th three, no, uh, last among the four, the last four. The last four. Yes, okay. the other one, the last one was going to SHS there. Okay, okay. okay. So you're going to do HND. HND, by the time you graduate, you have work to do. Plus, your sister will be able to take care of you, your big sister. We listened, then we went. If I tell you I don't have a first degree, would you believe it? You don't have a first degree. I don't, but I have two masters. I'm a qualified accountant. What I'm trying to say is sacrifices unnecessary sacrifices so w look for people that also have the same ideas with you can you share the apartment can you share the rent because mm -hmm. it's all about reducing your costs yes can you share the apartment with someone or can you reduce it why do you need a two bedroom mm. why by force you have to live in town you can go to maybe to the outskirts that the rents are a bit cheaper. So what it means that you don't have to sleep. You wake up early and join the bus and come. But if you want to enjoy your sleep and just pick a 30 minutes and come, you have to pay rent. So look for places that you know you wouldn't have to spend much. It's in the spending, like I said. Have that That's healthy yeah, yeah. relationship yeah. with money. Yeah. When you're taking money out of your pocket, ask a lot of questions before you spend it. We women especially, we, 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 we have a very rough attitude with, with mm. when it comes to money. Oh, mm. yes. Mm. You can just be going and you see something, something that yeah. you don't even need. Oh. It wasn't even part of any plan. Yeah. And you, you, you buy it. Yeah. Have that healthy attitude yeah. and be disciplined. Mm. So look for ways, if, can, if you can get someone that you can share the rent with. And you know this business, I don't want to do this, I don't want to do that. Sacrifice. Tell yourself, I'm giving myself the next two to three years. I'm going to do this. And make sure you stick to it.
So even if it's a hundred CDs that you can put it aside, you're doing a search that by the end of the three years, you can walk out of the situation. For a very long time, I had this notion that, you know, in fact, I was part of those that used to think that my, money is a spirit. You need to do things for money to fear you. <laughs> so when you get the money, spend it. Because in the past, you day. You will spend. The spending is good. Spend you it. have to let money know that I am the one who controls exactly. you, you controlling me. But send the money to where it will come back to you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So if you see it as investment, if you see it as a, then it's that you have that healthy relationship. But don't send money to where it doesn't come. It back. doesn't come back. So if it's a shoe that I'm going to buy, probably I'm going for an interview, and I need to go and cross my leg and get that damn job. Right. So, so I'm spend so that I get that money back. Then make sure that you get the job. Exactly. So whatever that I'm doing, I need to do it so that the money comes back. That is a healthy relationship I'm talking about. Where money just goes and it doesn't come back. It's not healthy. Money should look for you. Money should, when money leaves you, you should feel so lonely, it will come and look for you. Mm. That's all, my friend. I, I missed you, I've come back. Right. But when money goes, it doesn't come back to you. You don't have that healthy it's a relationship. Big problem. Yes. So you're budgeting, you're planning, then that's where your new year resolution will come in that I'm going to save this amount of money by you know, you can do it for the whole year, but please learn to break it down on a daily basis. If you can't do daily, at least do weekly. So if your plan is to do 10K at the end of the year, how is 10K half year? It's 5K at the end of the sixth month. That's the end of the second quarter. So first quarter, you want to save 2,500. How are you saving it? Are you saving under your pillow? Mm -hmm. Is it somewhere that is so accessible that so you can just quickly run and go and take the money? Mm -hmm. Don't make don't make it so accessible. Rama, you know, not to cut you short, mm -hmm. but then I, I, I got this uh, uh, budget binder. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've seen that book. No. It has envelopes. Oh, yeah, 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 yes, yes, so yes. you open it, then and you just stick the, you, put yeah, the money in. Yeah, so uh, you demarcate them. So this one is for uh, transportation, mm -hmm. this is for mm -hmm. fuel, mm -hmm. uh, this is for parting, this is exactly. for air yes. and all that. Based on the percentage that you have allocated. Yeah, exactly. 60, 30, whatever. Yes. Mm. Yes, yeah, so I got that. And then anytime I would get money, mm. like cash on me, mm. I would do that in the budget mm. envelope. But before I realize, I'll you go back to that. Is, it means you don't have a healthy relationship. <laughs> I would go back to I would go back to, because it, I, I, it's right by me. I know yes. where I put it. Mm. So, so if I want to, if I need it's it, I'll so easily go accessible. To the, to the book. Don't, you don't have to make it accessible. Right. So before you get there, you, some thought process should have gone on. Do you really need this? Yeah. Don't you have the black one? Mm -hmm. You can even, the, I think that even the red one looks better. You stop spending. But where it's so close to you, mm -hmm. you just pick it. You don't have a healthy, re you should have a healthy relationship. Yeah. Be disciplined yeah. about it. It's yeah. difficult, it's something that can be tough. You are even saying, when, when kids come in, mm -hmm. it's so difficult to keep a budget. What someone falls ill at a time that you don't expect, expect unexpectedly. Okay. So, for women, the partner you choose is also equally very important. Can you please repeat? The partner you choose. Right. Okay. And I don't mean the person who is rich. Yeah. I don't mean the person who is dusted. Right. No, the, but the partner you choose is equally important. Mm. Someone that is ready to go t t with you on a journey. You wonder how five kids, two masters. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Someone has to be able to stand in there for you. That you know what? I'm going to allow you to do A, B, C, D. It's okay. I'll hold the fort. I'll do this. I'll help you do that. But where you have someone that, you know, there are some people can be jealous of you yeah. as you're progressing. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a superiority complex. Exactly. Yeah. So they will not allow you to grow. You'll clip your wings. Very true. So watch who you are picking because it's also equally part of it. There's so many women, you know, you see them bubbly, you know, fun. But it got to the point, as I see someone just dim their lights. Yeah. So the partner you choose is equally important. Then you can be able to, you know, uh, balance life very, very well. Because other than that, it will drag you down. Or somehow, so I don't want to use the word, you know, 
overly ambitious or ambitious, so mm -hmm. they will just walk out of you and do yeah. what yeah. you want to do. Yeah. But where there are kids involved, it, it becomes a challenge. Mm. So watch, watch who you're, you, you, you're going to settle down with and see that. It's like the partnership that we discussed. Yes. How well does your vision and the person's vision you know, meet? Correlate? Exactly. Yeah. How, how do they blend yeah. in? Yeah. Do you see the same picture? It's not about men in the choir, sorry. Mm. We attend the same church mm. or we are all both Muslims. No, mm. it, it's, it's, that is good. It's perfect. But so, so it should somebody, go beyond that. So for you who is looking out to get a, part, a, a partner mm. in that regard, do you have to do some background checks for a while very important before you present it to very the very 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 important you need to know what you're going in for and who you're going in with okay it's very very important you need to have that understanding but my i also might be mindful that whatever that you discover is only 50 percent of that person mm -hmm. because that person has not been True. married before yeah you two you've not been married before yeah. definitely you're going to discover different layers of that person's personality so you make room for adjustments. But the first 50, the, the dating period, you need to discover. Do information gathering. Be able to find, do serious analysis of the person and be certain before you enter because mm -hmm. it has an effect on your life, mm -hmm. on your finances, on your children, on your children's future and every decision that you take. Because now you're two. And the two have become one. They have become one. Exactly. Rama, uh, there have been conversations of the youth of today crying on social media. There are no jobs. There are no jobs. Mm. There are no jobs. We have quite a number of them who are senior high school leavers and are unfortunately, because of financial restraints, have not been able to further their education. Mm. Not just that. Even the ones that have been able to further their education through to the university and have their degrees mm. are unable to get jobs. Mm. Young people in such situations, but it looks like there are opportunities out there, but they can't see it to go grab it. Mm. What can they do? Okay, first, um, what I'll say, is, like I said, you know, keep your ears on the ground. There are no jobs, but some people are getting jobs. Yes. Yes, you say that, oh, they are using A, B, C, I don't want to go into that. Uh, but there's definitely an opening somewhere. But, you know, what do you want? Some people are, are okay with the entry level. Yeah. But maybe you are looking for branch manager's job. Yeah, I'm aiming high. Yeah, I'm aiming high. Yeah. So can you look at, can you look at that? Yeah, calm down. Calm maybe. down a bit. Yeah. And among the youth, some are ready to go into entrepreneurship. There's funding there. Okay. Yes. Go to, buy graphic a lot and read the pages, mm -hmm. you see a lot of adverts. Mm -hmm. Try it. I got my job through adverts. Mm. Yes, it worked. That is it. And be innovative. It's difficult, yes. But what else would you do? What else? Because it looks like a Would lot you of sit down and cry? Harry as well. That is it. Yeah. Give yourself time. But within that time, have a focus. And if you can upgrade yourself, do so. Mm. Because probably they are looking for certain key things that you don't have. Are you willing to take an internship that doesn't pay? I, I say this a lot. I've got quite a number of people who slide into my DMs mm. and are telling me they are, they are looking for job opportunities. Mm. They wish they would do media and all mm. that. Then I would ask you, are you willing to intern? Because when you, when you do internship, you expect to be paid. Indeed. But they are looking to get a job right there and then and start taking their monies at the end of the month? Sacrifice and lifestyle. Sacrifice and, the and get the experience. Exactly, get the experience. Yeah. Yeah. And someone say, I have all the experience, yeah. I still don't, get, yeah. don't have the job. Yes. That is where the God factor come in. Mm. Yes. Because I under you get, you get, you, you, you be frustrated. And when frustration sets in, you, you get, you know, depressed. Yeah. And that even breaks you apart. So please, just stay focused and very, very positive. Have that healthy attitude that I'm going to get it. Mm. And it's going to be well. Mm. But before then, let me do A, B, C, D. Let me also commit my little bit yeah. to it. 
I mean, I love the fact that you've said it, that uh, quite a number of them are aiming to get branch managers, managerial positions, and then all that. How about you calm down a little? Because maybe with that, you could, could. get it. Exactly. At least the entry level. Yes. I was listening to one of the former uh, managing directors of uh, MTN. I've forgotten that he was a Nigerian. Mm. He said he started as just taking uh, meeting minutes, board meeting minutes. He was just a writer. He's not even the board secretary. <laughs> yes. He said, just writing meeting minutes, writing. He became the MD. You will not understand. You say that you yeah, can't write, yeah. I and become, and become but MD. But you see, you position yourself at God position at the place of authority. So the decisions that have been taken, everything that has been discussed yeah. in his ears. So when we are looking for people who have institutional knowledge, people who understand issues, who would we ask? Oh, they would definitely go to him. Exactly. Yeah. Why did Joseph go into the prison? Mm -hmm. It's not because the minister's wife, you know, wanted to do anything, but God needed him to be there so that he can be discovered. It's very important we stay close to our maker and take these lessons from religious book to educate ourselves when we yeah. find ourselves at you know situations that are a bit extremely beyond our capacity right. and it will make things a bit easier and everything that you're going through I call it the, your days of wilderness is preparing you for your glory if you don't have that attitude everything breaks you down yes it's okay to break down I'm a chief crier but <laughs> when you're done crying when you're done crying, and as you're crying, you're looking for spaces to put your foot. When you're done crying, move on, pick yourself oh, up. Yeah. Ask yourself, am I the only person without a job? No. Am I going to be the only person? Certainly no. People yeah. are still graduating and coming yeah. to join me. Yeah. But yeah. can I do something about it? That's how I ask this question. What do you have? What do you want? What do you have? What can I do within that space? Okay. What I didn't share. When Rami Consort began, the, when the clothing uh, business collapsed, it collapsed with debt. I owed. Mm. And they were, they were harassing me. You see this back in the days, the savings and loans? Yes. I took a little, a little my, my funding from them. Wow. It collapsed with debt. So imagine me having debt and not having a job and not having a business. But I still showed up. That's a lot. So that's how my Rami, 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 Rami consult came in. My twin sister's former bosses was my first client. My only client at the time. So I do that at the end of the month, I'm going to get this check from this one. Then I'm going to use it to pay the debt off. That is it. Plus the support from my partner. Mm -hmm. You say, yes, you are mm -hmm. not married, but you have support of your family, yeah. support of good friends. I don't want to call them anything, but good friends. Good can friends. And appreciate the little that you're giving. If you see it as small, it will be small in your eyes. But if someone supports you within a coin and you see it as big, that's what I'm saying, the healthy attitude towards money. Yeah. It becomes what you want it to be. Because God is a multiplier. Mm -hmm. The factor that you give to him is what he multiplies. True. If you give him um, zero, he multiplies by what he has. If you give him two, you multiply the two for you. So imagine you can do 2,000. Imagine you can do 10,000. I'm not talking about tight alone. Yeah. But yeah. sacrifice for yourself as well. And have that healthy relationship with money. When it comes to you, make sure when it's going, you should come back make with sure. children <laughs> and grandchildren. And grandchildren. So it could be return on investment, it could yeah. be profits, yeah. it could be whatever. Yeah. But it should come. One thing that I did this festive season was I banned myself from buying new stuff. It's I a healthy myself, choice. Yes. That's what I'm saying. And it helped. It, very. It helped. Me. Have that calculation. Oh, yeah. the red, even the red looks better with this. Mm -hmm. this. Don't buy exactly. It. And you're done. I told myself, no, no. It's no, attitude. No, no, no. No buying. No. No buying. No. So after a while. Exactly. So I have that yeah. plan. I usually have this. You see this, this way that I've combined it. Mm -hmm. I can do it the following day to be new. You just have to change something in between. Yeah. It's new. <laughs> Nobody knows your wardrobe. That's Mark, true. Mark, Mark has just, Mark Zuckerberg has just one t-shirt, yes. if you ask me. But yes. that's not in several. The blue black. As, as I, the blue black. And that guy is rich. <laughs> He's so rich. That's true. But one color. Yeah. Same design. Yeah. All the time. He's okay. I only saw him in suit when he was invited to the U.S. Um, 
house. That's, that's it. That was the only time I saw him in a suit. Other than that. So please, if it's one shoe, let it be the one let shoe. Let it be the one shoe. And yeah. give yourself time. Oh. Well, forget about what people will say or no, think. No, who cares? They say, who cares? Who yes. cares? Yes. I remember when we were in Pole, we had people who had in school. So some of us were looked down upon. First of all, after 20 years in school, we are all mm. on the job market, right? Uh -huh. We are all working. And so when we see each other, yes. and now they are proud to show, oh, this was my mate in school. But back in the day, it wasn't like I wasn't, that. I wasn't it. The you were not seen. No, 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 no. So it will pass. It will pass. It will yes. pass. Have yeah. that attitude that it yeah. will pass. Yeah. So in between, and don't get so frustrated to the point that you will sell yourself short. Mm. I don't want to say sell your body, but yes. you're selling yourself short. Yes. Because mind you, even people who have been employed are, are sometimes are faced with harassment, in quotes. True. True. Imagine you went for your interview, you qualified, you've been employed, but someone says, if you don't do A, B, C, D, I won't allow you to, be, to have peace of mind in this, in this organization. So what do you do? So are you going to keep on doing that? Mm. That's a very good question. So have that self-worth, yeah. have that, 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 you know, see yourself as that high person. That high person. And don't sell yourself short. Don't sell yourself short. Because when the situation changes, mm. you meet the same people again. They'll be old, they'll be ragged. They won't be as nice as they used to be. Very true. Mama, you have a business with your twin sister. Uh, business relationship. We don't have a business together now. Okay. We started when the boutique started. Yes, we did it together. So it's no more. It's no more. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, doing your own thing. Basically. Basically. Mm. Okay, but you have a foundation. Yes. Okay. She she actually has the foundation. Okay. Yes. So she had one thing about the two of us that whatever she has, I'm in it. Whatever I'm doing, she's also equally in it. Is that that's the both of you? Yes. <laughs> oh, I, I was <laughs> yes, that's the most of us. Okay, okay. <laughs> yes, so she has a foundation. She, she's in, she, her passion is um, seeing women thrive. I think we both show, shared this. Yeah, I was about to same, say. Exactly, yeah. that same passion. But she, she takes it to a different level. So she has the uh, Khadija uh, Foundation that looks at training young girls in communication, you know, public speaking and you know, basically giving them mentorship. Okay. And, yeah. if, and if there are openings elsewhere, then she can help you to do it. Okay. After it was being done just one bit here and there, but after a lot of us, why don't we just organize it mm -hmm. and do it well? Mm -hmm. As a, a formal, um, or, you know, organization or some formal business, whatever you want to call it. Incredible. So that's what she's doing. Incredible. Do you have she anything? works. Okay, she works. She works full time. Okay. As well. Yes. I think that the both of you are just enjoying, you know, the multitasking and doing this, that, and that. At the it's same possible. Time. She's, she's also married with kids. Yes, she's married. <laughs> she has three. <laughs> right. You're doing well. We are doing well. You are doing so We are all doing well. Yeah. And if it's not happening or it hasn't happened, it doesn't mean it's not happening. You start from zero before you get to 100. So you don't know how long God is going to keep you at the zero. So as you're there praying, be working towards it. Mm. Yes, Joseph was, Joseph was in the prison, but he was there praying and also working towards it. Yes. Interpreting people's dreams. Yes. Making sure yeah. people were okay there. Yeah. So when the opportunity came, he was not even there to go and sell himself. Yes, yeah, somebody job, did. God yeah. has already sent the blessings ahead of him. Sure. Have that attitude. And one day, to open, and that you get so frustrated, your own actions would, would work negatively for you. Have that healthy relationship with, um, with God, and also when the money comes, have a healthy attitude. Or else you get the money, and it will leave you. Mm. But it should leave, but it should leave and come with and children. And come with children. And grandchildren, and grandchildren, grand -children, grand -children, grand -children. Yes. And it should be, you yeah. know, multiplying yeah. all the time. Yeah. yeah. It should come with a whole lineage. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Rama, thank you so much for being here. Uh, before you go, uh, what would you say would be the go-to thing or idea or knowledge that people have to go to when it comes to managing your monies? The go-to thing. Okay. I'll still come back to the lifestyle. Lifestyle. 
because even to wake up and think, what am I going to do? What am I investing? It comes with attitude. Okay. What are you feeding your brain? Okay. What books do you read? Right. What inspires you? Right. Who do you look up to? Who are your mentors? Who, who inspire you? And what about them inspire you? There are people that I look up to only for dressing. Yeah, wardrobe. Mm -hmm. There are others that I listen to because of wisdom. Others have business ideas. Others are able to show me how they, they were able to make it. So you need to have all these people. Because ev everything is in the brain. If you're down, everything is down. So keep that positive attitude and keep that positive focus in the mind. The mind has to be healthy. For me, that's the goal. So the second one is be disciplined about money. Be disciplined about looking for it. Stay focused. Have an objective and remain with it. That purpose, remain with it. And when it comes, be disciplined about how it goes. Like I said, as it goes in, you should it come in come. with generational returns. Yeah. Yeah. That's how you keep it. Okay. And don't lose hope. When you interview all entrepreneurs, there were days that they had wanted to just give up. Very true. Very they true. wanted to just collapse the yeah. business. But they think about the people that they have employed. Yeah. Some have three kids. Others, someone just got married, now about to start a, a, a family. If you collapse the business, what does the person do? Very true. So they stay in because of that. Like I said, what do you want to do? Do you want to employ your soldiers when you're opening the business? You want to make money or you want to solve a problem? Mm. If it's there to solve a problem and you see it as part of your duty that you're fulfilling for the sake of God, you come back and do it. <laughs> no matter the challenge, you know he'll come back and help you. And help you. So the attitude. The attitude. So. Rama, Rama, thank you so much. This has okay. been highly, highly insightful. I know the viewers out there have learned a lot. And I know that you've learned as to how best to prepare yourself, to gear yourself up for 2024 when it comes to your finances. This year we are doing better and we are saving more. And the money is when it goes out. It is coming with a whole lineage behind them as well. Uh, my guest has been Rama Boache. Uh, Wasim, uh, who is a chartered accountant. She's an entrepreneur. She's a businesswoman and she's a TV show host as well. Rama, thank you so much for your thank time. You so That's been incredible. Happy I've learned so much. Everybody. Yeah. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you.